Hi, welcome to Groove Diner After Dark. I'm Buddy Gibbons, and tonight we're talking about one of my favorite things, traditional grip. This is going to be good. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Thank you for joining me. Sorry we were a little delayed there. I had this uh, hiccup with the computer about six minutes in, six minutes prior to lunch. So you never know when things are going to go crazy. It's live TV after all. Okay, live streaming after all. Oh man, well I hope you're all doing well and I'll be glad to see everybody as you get here. Please say hello. Um, let me know that you are here because otherwise I won't know who's here. And it looks like we've got about... 12 or 15 of us here right now breathing hard. Well, that was a, that was quite an intro for me. So tonight, uh, we're talking about one of my favorite things, traditional grip. Is traditional grip valid still? Is it valuable still? Is it something that matters at all still? Did it ever? Well, of course it did ever. Um, but what about now? You know, does it matter anymore? Do people care about it at all. What about those of us who are absolute aficionados of it? Um, those of us, we're, we're kind of a cult. <laughs> I was talking with so many people this, this past week, uh, those of us that play traditional grip uh, pretty well exclusively, and I'm, I'm you know, 95% of the time I play, I play traditional, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that I learned a long time ago, but I'm going to tell you my story about it and how it impacted my whole my entire music career, the journey that I've had as a musician is directly related to my ability to play traditional grip. Uh, hey, Donnie, how are you, man? Toby, welcome, welcome. Thanks for, yeah, Toby, thanks for coming back. I appreciate that. Um, so tonight we're going to have videos. I, I sent out a, a, a message across the world. Reggie Dows, how is everything in Indiana, my friend? Um, Everybody, I asked, I asked drummers, do you play traditional grip? Send me a quick video of why and how you play traditional grip. And the response was, wow, overwhelming, staggering number of people sent videos. So I settled on six. 
Some of you that, I, that sent them in, I'm sorry that I won't be able to get to them. The only reason that I called them at all was because, uh, quite literally, uh, a lot of people said the same thing. And here's it. This is it. Well, it's because I've always played that way. Okay, I get it. I get it. That's a valid reason. Why do you play traditional? Because I've always played that way. Got it. Okay, cool. But I wanted a little more. I was looking for other reasons to even care about this old grip. Why, why do any of us care at all? What, do, what does it matter in the overall musical realm? That's another great question, right? Hey, Brennan, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, the history of traditional grip dates back to the Revolutionary War, 1776. Those guys with their slung snare drums, the snare drummers marching off to war. They had they literally would play with the, the drum up this high, and they had to get, a, get over the top of the drum so that they could play it. And that's literally where this whole thing developed. Um, and we're going to definitely talk about the specifics of my personal left-hand grip. Doug Tan, how you doing, brother? Uh, we're going to talk about my particular left-hand grip and how I teach it, how I learn it, how I use it, and how it has, has affected me in a very, very positive way. Barry Halevi, how's everything in North Carolina? Good to see you. Um, but first, we, we need to talk about what, what it was about the grip that made it happen, that angle. It was literally that. So a lot of times, even now, when you see guys play in traditional, myself included, my snare drum is not flat. It's certainly not leaned toward me. It's leaning slightly away from me. When they developed that grip, there were a number of different ways. This was one of the early ones, but there's not a lot of control to be had there. Uh, they tried to kind of do a match, but I mean, take a look, come on, you know, and they came up with this thing here and it was something like this, a little bit more of a claw like that. So in the mid 1970s, early 1970s, the, the movement toward match grip began. Why was that? Because every other percussion instrument, timpani, mallets, bongos, if you play them with sticks, literally everything was played match grip. So why in the world are the snare drummers sticking to this? It became a thing, and very many, many, many teachers had a very difficult time teaching traditional grip anyway. So instead of digging in and learning uh, what the real traditional looked like, they taught match grip. Easier to teach, easier to grasp, easy, easier to play. I, we'll, we'll get into that for sure. So tonight, I want to start with uh, with my friend David Stanek. You'll see uh, who he is and who he's played with and whatnot. You'll see his credentials. What is that? Oh, that's my in-ear. No wonder I'm not hearing everything. So uh, take a look here and let's see what Dave's got to say. Hey, everybody. This is David Stanek. Uh, my buddy, Buddy Gibbons, asked me to talk a little bit today about um, why and how I use traditional grip. I think there's some controversy these days about whether or not uh, traditional grip is still a, a valid you know, grip in contemporary music. And, um, you know, I never really cared about that argument much. Uh, traditional grip might be a jazz oriented thing, which is nice because it makes it easy to angle up and get less of the tip on the head. So if you want to play some light kind of. But there are also some, uh, asymmetrics that I embrace because it is an asymmetric grip. It's not a symmetric grip. Now, there was a time where uh, I remember specifically, I did a long run of a show uh, that was an original production with music by Keb Mo uh, called Thunder Knocking on the Door. And on matinee days, I would play one show in traditional grip the whole way and the other show in match grip. There was a lot of double shuffle type stuff. And ghost note shuffle type stuff. So I would try these grooves with both grips. More or less, right? And so by trying to equalize my ability in either hand. I also learned some things that I liked about the difference. You know, I, I, it became clear to me that if I needed more weight, a match grip allowed me to put the weight of my hand above the stick. But 
if I say didn't want a rim shot and wanted to play a backbeat, I could be in traditional grip and get right into the center of the drum. And, you know, that felt good too. And that's what works for me. So check it out. And if it works for you, have fun either way. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Dave. I appreciate that, man. Uh, David's got some good points there. One of the things in particular is that he's talking a lot about the, what is the tip of the stick will do and, and how he takes the weight off the stick and he can play ghost notey things from a different perspective. And it's an interesting thing because I kind of do that naturally without ever having really thought about it much. Um, if I'm really wanting to lay into a backbeat, I, I use a whipping motion, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But if I'm playing ghost notes, the stick kind of naturally comes up to a point. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how that, that was happening it, with the backbeat, I'm slamming it down, but then all the ghost notes, I'm kind of flo almost floating back up uh, just to get to that particular moment. And what that does is it puts a different part of the tip of the stick on the drum head. That's, a, that's an incredibly important thing that just kind of develops naturally when you're playing this particular grip. It's one of those things that we that we don't think about necessarily as we go. You know, it's it's a fascinating thing to me that I just naturally do that. And I've watched a lot of other guys do it. And I wonder how many of us truly think about the the actual motion that we're using when we're in the middle of playing. I think the answer is not a lot of it, you know. It's one of those deals where, where, okay, so this is just sort of what happens. Um, here's here's uh, another, This we're gonna talk to uh, Doug Tan here. Here's another one. Uh, I'd like you to take a listen to what Doug's got to say. My name is Doug Tan. I live in Los Angeles, California. But Buddy has asked me to talk about traditional grip, traditional grip. I play traditional grip 100% of the time. I don't even know that I could navigate matched grip very well right now. So why do I play traditional grip? Well, several reasons. Number one is the mental or tactile differentiation between the hands. For the stuff that I enjoy playing, the stuff that I want to play, and uh, the players that I really enjoy listening to, they all tend to play this grip, the traditional grip. I like the feeling I get by having two different grips really makes me think of different sound sources, all right? Number two is I find, I use molar almost all the time, right? Big proponent of the molar. And I can't, well, I haven't spent much time. I don't see molar working for me as well like this. Traditional grip and molar seem to go hand in hand, all right? The other thing I want to talk about, regardless of the stroke, is this. Uh, I'm very good friends with a drummer named Mark Atkinson. We both agree that relaxation is key and tension is your enemy. Very famous drummer who I admire has said, sometimes I just need to muscle through the parts. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. I practice hours every day and I'm not 21 years old as you can tell and the second I feel tension right there I stop where's the tension coming from with me it tends to radiate right in here and I reset sometimes I bring the tempo down or the velocity down then we try again so to wrap this up because I'm way over time match grip 100% of the time completely relaxed, devoid of tension, no tension. If you feel tense when you're practicing, stop playing. You're just hurting yourself, right? If you're a proponent of molar, it makes a lot of sense, right? And finally, I just dig the fact that it feels different in my hands. So 
that's what I did. Go practice, send your love to Buddy, and we're out. Um, one of the things uh, that Doug touched on and that David Stanek touched on as well was that it's a different feeling hand to hand. That's a really big thing because those of us that play traditional, it is it is asymmetric. We don't hold it the same way, so we don't have the same we don't have the same weight. We don't have the same feel that a match grip player does. Something interesting about it for me is that I actually I know things about my own playing, right? I I I tend to be a little pushy with the time when I'm playing traditional grip. Uh, I think that's the Stuart Copeland in me. Uh, I listen to him forever and ever, and he tends to be a pushy player, a traditional grip guy. Um, and, and I tend to push a little myself. If I turn around and play match grip, you know what happens? I settle back a little bit. I think it's because my technique is not as good. Therefore, I, I have to work a little bit more, and the, the feel is a little bit relaxed because, frankly, I'm a little later with my left hand, and it's always in the snare drum where I, where I push and pull the time. So this is a little edgier for me than other things would be. And that, I think, is, is directly because of that asymmetric thing. Doug also mentioned molar. And One of the things I was going to show you guys, though, is this. Uh, Doug was talking about the molar stroke. Now, I'm no expert at it. He is. Uh, but that is a simple whipping motion. It's not simple at all. But it's a whipping motion that, uh, that will allow you. Here we go. We can see it from here. I, where you pick the arm and elbow up. And the, and the arm kind of whips down like so. So the whole motion is very, very smooth. And when you hit the stick, when the stick hits the drum, it absolutely has its own rebound, just like that. And in a, a truly great molar player like Doug is, uh, you learn to each, you learn to control groups of twos and groups of threes. Again, I'm not a molar player. Doug is. We should have Doug on and have him sh demonstrate molar for everybody so that they, they don't see uh, the bad way to do it. They see the good way to do it. Like that. Like I say, I'm terrible at it. But Doug's great at it. So let's see. Hey, nope, that's not it either. <laughs> How about right here? There, okay, we'll just do this. Uh, there it is. Okay, that's the front one. Funny. Um, so uh, that, this is funny, Toby. Uh, Toby's asking what happens when you drop a stick. You know, that's why you keep a bag right here beside you full of sticks. Uh, so you can just get more and more and more of them. So anyway, we'll come back to my story here in a minute. Let's talk to Mr. Paul Angers. Let's listen to what Hi, everybody. Doing. Mr. Paul here talking about uh, drumstick grips today. I use a traditional grip. Looks something like this. Um, the reason I use it is I, I grew up doing that. Uh, all my favorite drummers uh, use a traditional grip, uh, and they s switch back and forth. Throughout my career, I've always switched back and forth. When I needed a uh, uh, match grip for strength or whatever, it was easy to come by. So I could go from this, and many drummers can go from this to this very easily. But what drummers don't do is go from the match grip to the traditional grip. They usually don't switch back over once they start this. Now, every other percussion instrument is traditional grip. But the drum set and the way, uh, you know, we've learned it uh, from marching and all that, we use a traditional grip. Uh, my teacher was Murray Spivak and uh, always, uh, you know, encouraged me to, to practice with using the uh, traditional grip because he knew it was going to be a small adjustment to go over to the match grip, and that's what I did. Uh, I'm an old guy, still using the uh, traditional grip, and uh, there it is. Do I have anything else to say? I don't think so. The main thing is to have fun. You gotta have fun, and you gotta make the music work. All right, thank you, Paul that man um, it's it's been an interesting thing to hear why people play play traditional and like I said a lot of it has to do with with simply that's how I began there, there was a lot of that an awful lot of that and I get it you know that's that's a, a valid a valid valid reason to play it because it's something you began with 
you know, Paul says, I'm an old guy, and, and so I do it. But th the fact of the matter is, and here's my story, I did not start out as a traditional grip player. I was actually a match grip player. I learned, I learned to play match grip first. And I was a mediocre high school drummer who was a mediocre first year college drummer. I was a snare drum guy. I'm a marching band geek. From That's my thing. I'm a marching band geek. So for me, uh, I literally just had um, this, this, I had no instruction. I had nobody to help me. Whatever I was able to accomplish was just through whatever modicum of talent I may have had. And I, I did manage to get a scholarship my first year of college uh, on, for music. And I was on the drum line and uh, I was playing match grip and this this guy who was a good bit older, he'd come back to college. He was 28, you know, and we're freshmen in high school. That seemed really old. Um, well, when he, he came to me and he said, you've actually, you've got some talent, but you're doing it wrong. And he took the time to teach me about traditional grip. That one thing, as soon as it, as soon as I got it, and mind you, it took me probably three or four or five weeks of doing nothing but traditional grip to understand it, to come to terms with what it actually meant, to, to understand how to make it move. And we're going to go into that in a few minutes. But all of that w was absolutely crucial to my own advancement as a player. And once I got it, uh, just, just for the record, he put the stick in my hand and made my hand the right thing and taped it with a black electrical tape. And I would walk around campus with my hand taped up all day long. I would go to class with my hand taped up. I would go eat. I would pick up a fork, traditional grip, and eat traditional grip with my left hand. I still eat traditional grip, by the way. If you ever eat lunch with me or whatever, you'll see me eating with my left hand traditional, which is just the truth. Uh, but that's how I learned it. I, I literally was forced into learning traditional grip. So I would just slide the stick in when band practice came and slide the stick out when I was done. Uh, it was that kind of crazy. I was that dedicated to learning it. And the moment I got it, I remember very clearly we were doing a drumline exercise thing and all of a sudden I got it. And that was the moment that my talent level was released. Whatever my talent level is, it's because of that moment. All of a sudden, boom, it was like the whole world opened up to me. Oh, you know, the sun shone and, and the clouds parted. Uh, it was really a tremendous, tremendous thing for me, a moment that I remember incredibly clearly. The, and I truly will never, ever, ever forget it. So for me, I didn't start traditional. I learned traditional. And then within just two or three years, I was, was really very, very good at it. And uh, I have never left it behind. Even though I play match grip 5% of the time, it is always, always, always because uh, there are two or three grooves that I just play better, better match grip. And it's probably that whole um, leaving it behind thing, like I had told you. Um, so fascinatingly, uh, I play halftime shuffles and whatnot better match grip. Go figure. Um, okay. Tom Kuhn, how are you doing, man? Um, backwards to me, how you were forced to change to, met, to marching at KU to match it. So KU? Was, was a match grip line. I'm surprised to hear that. Interesting. Uh, I guess there are still some that do that, uh, though it's not as common you know, as it, as it once was, certainly. But that's really fascinating. Uh, Michael Reschke, what are you saying? Uh, started traditional, but use both and teach both since you have a lot of marching students. Okay, so yeah, that's exactly right. Um, one of the things about traditional that keeps it alive is marching band. So is it valid? Absolutely. Uh, it's valid as long as anybody on earth plays it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's valid forever. And marching band is what keeps it um, in the forefront of people's mind. If you are a marching snare guy, and that's my whole ball of wax, then you absolutely must be a traditional player. If you want to take it to a very high level anyway, you've got to be a traditional player. And we'll definitely come back to that um, hey, we have a Twitcher. Who's this? Power Slave. Oh, hey, how you doing, Eli? Uh, yes, I did, in fact, eat that way. And I still I still do. You and I go from time to time to Chinese, and you should take a look at that. I do it all the time. That was 1981, huh? So Tom's got a big one here. Thoughts on traditional? If you play in a drum corps, have your own personal preference and kit? Yes. If you're a percussionist, he doesn't find that it, that it transfers. And I agree, it doesn't. But it is still valid, but I certainly agree that it doesn't transfer. In fact, I had to play a 
tenor part, quince. And I'm so bad at match that I can't play the double stroke stuff as well. I played it traditional grip on quince. Ooh, 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 just because I kind of, I didn't have any choice. Uh, it was really rather funny to me. Um, you know, early 80s, yeah, he's talking about early 80s, how they forced you to march traditional grip. And that was a thing that did happen. It didn't last long. It was just a few years kind of in that little late 70s, early to mid 80s thing where that people were moving to, to match grip. And now here we are back to drumline, 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 drumline. So let's, and on that note, let's take a look at uh, Renee Beavers. Hi, Renee Beavers here. And I'm here to talk why I use traditional, just like you would have in the right hand and you find that balance point where that stick just falls and you get the rebound. It's that same area. but on the left hand. I feel I get way more, for me, way more control. I also, when I do diddles or I just drag those ghost notes, when I'm playing a groove, it's just more expressive. I can get it as soft as I want easier and those notes still to come out in the way that I'm, I'm hearing them. And I've been playing traditional ever since I can remember. And how I get that grip, I'm gonna have this area, this area, and it sits in here. Sometimes I'll fluctuate between this area here and more back in here. But the concept is always still the same, whether I'm up on the stick, or more farther back to get more weight. I can play just as hard and just as loud with this grip as I can with a match grip. Yeah, okay. And so that's, uh, that's that, what Renee was saying there is something that I think a lot about. A lot of people talk about the idea that traditional grip is more nuanced, more subtle, more controllable you can play uh with with more dynamic and that's all true but i don't have any problem getting power out of it either and that's because of the of the actual technique that i use with my traditional and obviously i finally got my front camera back it sits right here there's Barry Halimi. Let's see what he's got to say. How you doing, Barry? All right. He played snare drum in boot camp. Used snares that were played off the outside of the left leg. Right, of course. So that uh, learned to play traditional because match was not comfortable. That's going to those slung snare drums we talked about early on. It's just, it's not going to work very well doing that to try to play on those slung snare drums. Of course, everybody plays, you know, carriers now. Uh, but back in the day, it would be left hand slung. Even I'm assuming that was into the probably what the early 80s would be my guess, huh? Very something like that. Anyway, um, my grip begins like this. You put your hand out exactly like you are shaking hands with someone. Now, listen, this is my version of traditional grip. For every human being that plays, there is a different version because all of our physiology is a little bit different. And that's OK. That's okay, but this is what works for me. It's what I teach when I teach traditional grip. It's what I teach when I do drum camps, and it works for many, many, many people. Uh, this is how I was taught. This is what I learned, so here's mine, okay? Shaking hands with somebody, drumstick. Sits right here in the crook, okay? Now, already I'm squeezing the stick. You see that I've, I've got, that stick's not going anywhere. It's mine. I've got it captured. Now, I've got it basically at that fulcrum. Rene did this thing a minute ago where he showed you that the two fulcrums were basically in the same spot. He's, he's right. I mean, they're very, 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 very close, right? So that fulcrum point is actually not really any different. And that's something that people miss. A lot of times they'll think that, the, that you're playing way up here. Now, I will say that on drum set, I tend to slide back if I'm really walloping a backbeat just because I get 
a little, I get more leverage. But if I'm doing anything at all, and yes, I slide up and down the stick constantly when I'm when I'm playing a uh, drum set. Uh, but it all starts and stops kind of at that same fulcrum point. All right. So the, thanks for that, Renee. Appreciate that. Next, what's the very first thing that matters? The index finger. It wraps around and it sits at the first knuckle joint. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. Where is it? Where is it? So backwards. There you go. It sits right at the first knuckle joint. I don't have it wrapped all the way around like that. It sits at the first knuckle joint. And this is crucial, okay? The thumb. The thumb and the first finger touch and connect right there on that same joint. Right there. I don't have the finger all the way down. I don't have the thumb like this. Because, and this is a, this is a point of discussion amongst people, when you have the, the connection point here, you actually end up getting a lot more speed out of this grip. There's something to be said for the push, and we'll get into the push in a minute. Next, the ring finger, right? Ring finger. And this one is incredibly important. The stick rests on the upper part, right along the fingernail, right there, right there, on the fingernail of your ring finger. Now let me tell you, when you're learning this, Man, do you get a blister right there, and it sucks. God, it hurts so much. Oh my gosh. But again, this is back to speed and control because ultimately you're using your index finger to push for power. Take a look. See, I'm pushing and I'm pushing against it, and I'm still able to basically hold the stick in place. When it comes down, I can then pull it back with the with the ring finger. Now, a lot of people will tell you they play down in here. Any, any part of the, of the finger. And it, look, it's not wrong. It's just different. Again, this is my traditional, right? This is, this is a bit of a, of a drum core thing from a few years back. Um, so right about here on the fingernail, that's, that's the basis of the grip. This index finger with a thumb attached, I'm a thumb up guy. Some people are thumb down people. I don't care. It'll, but you've got to keep that connection point for my grip. Uh, Doug and, and David earlier don't keep the connection. Uh, they, they push with their thumb. Uh, I have not found that to be something that I can sustain. I, I tend to get hand issues when I do that. So doing this, I have more power. Here's my speed. Pinky finger just kind of tucks in for a little bit of support. Now, what about this middle finger? You know, no, I'm not actually shooting the bird at you. Um, but what do you do with it? Well, ultimately, there are a number of things you can do. You can drop it completely out of the way or keep it up against the stick. If you got long fingers, which I don't, you can wrap it around. You don't want to wrap it like this so that it's holding the stick. You want it resting against the stick. Okay? And that's resting against allows you to control the angle. See how I'm doing that? I'm not even moving my arm. All I'm doing is expanding and contracting my hand. And I'm going from 10 inch tom. And I'll have to move to get here to 15 inch time. So 10, 15, all with just barely any motion at all. I can hit hi-hat and ride. Hi-hat and ride. All from this, right? Hey, Veronica, welcome, welcome. Glad you made it. Let's see what's saying. Uh, Michael Reschke, what are you saying? I played a slum drum in the 80s. It was pretty comfortable. I actually never got to play a slum drum, so uh, I'm a little bit a little bit bummed that I didn't, but... Uh, it would have been fun to do that. I think it would have been fun. Um, so, and Tom, what'd you say? If you marched with those in the old days, uh, can you use leg mounted snares? That's crazy. I can't even imagine having that and playing match grip with that. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, Michael's talking about the angle. That is something that I'm asked a lot because this is hands down. Number one, how do you do that thing with your left hand is, is the number one thing that I'm asked. Okay. Um, and, and I, I've got, I can actually do this in an elevator pitch, you know, a 30 second elevator pitch, but I've got a few more minutes tonight. So I obviously wanted to fill the time. Um, but anyway, this is, you've got the hand. So, so let's re, let's recap. Shaking hands, stick goes in at fulcrum point. It's locked in. Yay. Okay. Then I rest on ring finger at fingernail, wrap index finger to the first knuckle joint, touch knuckle joint to knuckle joint with the thumb, dun, 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 right? Okay, so those two, th that's, that's the hand. But how do you make this do anything? 
Because so often I show people this and the next thing I know... That's what they're doing. And you can't make any music with that, right? So um, what's what's the trick? And this is the thing that took me the longest to learn. Uh, even now when I teach this grip to to uh, kids in particular, drum camp age, there there's two things I talk about. One, don't be afraid of your elbow jamming into your side. This is actually part of a molar stroke. I'm not a molar player. We talked about that. I'm awful at it. But it is a bit of a molar stroke. It pushes, you push your elbow in to begin the turn. And the turn is just like turning a doorknob. So here you are, turn the doorknob, turn the doorknob. Whack, whack, and take a look. My elbow goes in and turn, in and turn. That is the key. If you get the turn, You get the turn, you get the backbeat. I was hitting rim shots consistently. Every time I was hitting a backbeat right then, all the ghost notes are center of the drum with that quick little lift of the tip, just exactly like, like David Sanic was talking about. So let's hear from uh, Donnie Satzer. What's Donnie got? My name is Donnie Satzer, and I want to thank Buddy Givens for uh, allowing me to do this video. We're talking about traditional grip, mainly why uh, we got in and, and the house. Uh, the main reason why is I originally learned uh, traditional grip and when I played rock for a number of years I played a lot of match grip, mostly match grip. I got back into it the last few years uh, quite a bit, uh, mainly when I started playing jazz again and that is the main reason. Um, let me play a little bit and show you my grip. Uh, grip obviously in the thumb and forefinger in the fulcrum. Uh, resting over my third finger and then I use my index finger for a lot of uh, uh, finger work just like uh, we're doing right now. So here we go. video and again I want to thank Buddy for allowing me to do this and hopefully it will get to the question that's uh, being asked and uh, thank you again. Have a great evening. All right thanks a lot Donnie appreciate that man. So I don't know if you could tell in Donnie's one of the things that I liked about his and one of the reasons why I chose his uh, oh, that's a great question, Toby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, one of the reasons I, I talked to, wanted to let you listen to Donnie's is he plays with a more open hand, the catching water hand. So his, his traditional starts a little more here. Now, for him, that worked well, right? He said he got into it, back into it when he was playing jazz. And I've said, you know, that, I, that that's typical. People tend to want to play traditional grip when they're playing things that are more swing oriented or, or a little more touch oriented and jazz tends to be that but because I'm a I can be a basher with my left hand traditional um, what Toby's or Toby sorry what Donnie's doing is uh, is playing with his hand in, in catching water so so he starts from the position let me see if I can show you my left hand here yeah so he starts from this position with his stick a little more up with the hand a little more flat now the difference in that and why it doesn't work for me it does work for him so so great no problem but what, what works for him here is he doesn't have very far to travel, right? He's got, a, he's got a quicker, easier time of getting around and stopping on the, on the drum. 
me, I tend to, I start from here, from a more perpendicular angle, perpendicular to the ground, so that I have further to turn. I don't want to hit the drum because my mic will kill you guys. So I like to have that perpendicular to the, to the ground. You can even tell exactly where my, where my hand is starting. And as soon as I make that turn, and I can get way back here, you know, and give it a wallop. Donnie, on the other hand, is playing from here, so it's harder for him to get a turn because he starts he starts turned essentially, and by doing that, he's getting a different amount of travel, a different type of travel than I am, and that works well for him, and I'm happy for that. That that's what I was saying early, is that quite literally there is for every pair of hands there is a different traditional grip. So one other thing about traditional grip, and, and uh, this is the rest of my traditional grip story. Traditional grip is 100% responsible for my professional career. Um, my apologies, Toby asked me the following question, and I want to answer this question. What's ghosting, she said. Ghost notes, Toby. So you get the loud notes, whack, and the ghost notes are the teeny little things in between. So all that little stuff that's happening in between, drummers do it a lot. All those teeny little quiet notes and the, uh, the idea it's an accented note and an unaccented note but a ghost note in particular accented note teeny 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 little note that's the difference is that it's a teeny 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 little thing super 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 quiet uh, so that's the game right there Tom uh, yes Tom says 16th notes on the hi-hats work well with traditional I could not agree more It's just hard to argue. Uh, there, there's something about that motion right there. It's so, so, so easy to get to it. Yeah, sure, you can do it this way. But doing it here, it's super relaxed. I'm 100% I'm on board with that. Toby, I hope that answered your question. So here's the remaining part of my story on what happened with traditional grip. 100% of my professional career, most of you know that I do a lot of music for television and film and such. Um, my whole thing started because I was playing in a rock band, had moved to L.A. maybe a year and a half earlier, and I was literally just playing a, a, with the rock band at the Viper Room. We had a CD release party, remember those? And we, we had this great crowd lying down the street, and it, was, it felt great that night, and the band was on fire. We played really, really well. And a guy approached me after the show and he said, hey, man, you got some marching in your background? I, yes, I do. I'm a marching band geek, I say. Of course I do. And he said, well, I need somebody to, to compose some music for me uh, that's got a marching band element and some, some drumline kind of stuff in it. I'm like, who are you? Right. So he pulls out his business card and he's a music supervisor for Fox Sports. And of course, I said, yeah, of course, whatever. He said, I love your band. Why don't you guys all come down for a meeting? And we will we'll, we'll discuss getting you guys to do some music for us, for some of our shows, for some of the football games, whatever. We'll talk about it. And I thought, awesome. So uh, I, I don't know exactly how to tell the next part of the story. I'm going to tell it gently. Um, the band didn't want to do it because, uh, well, they, they didn't want to do it. Whatever the reason was, they didn't want to do it. I did. So I went and took the meeting myself. And I said to him, he, I walk in and he goes, where's the band? I said, I'm the band. What do you need? And uh, I mean, that was brash, right? And he said, he said, he told me what he needed. A few songs that are very drumline oriented. Um, and, you know, he goes, can you, you know, do you have a home studio? Of course I do. Yeah, of course. Well, can you record this stuff at home? Of course I can. So you can produce these songs? No. Yeah. I mean, sure. No, I, I mean, Everything that he was asking me, I was lying through my teeth, basically. Sorry, Jerry. Um, <laughs> it, it all worked out. Uh, so I had to learn how to do all of the things that I do now because he hired me. He hired me to do two songs. Uh, and, you know, he, he paid me up front and 
royalties on the backside. I felt like I'd, lo- I'd won the lottery, you know, it was just a couple of songs, but it felt amazing at the time. And two songs became five, became seven, became, became, became. And, you know, now I've got 450 odd songs that are constantly in rotation uh, pretty much all the time. You can kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm almost always, <laughs> almost always on television these days, my music is. Uh, so, you know, I've had 250,000 song placements now because of playing traditional grip and a guy at the Viper Room say, seeing me and saying, you've got marching band in your background, right? That is literally why I have the career I have today. So you just never know what it is that's going to make or break something. So finally, uh, my, my last video, there is one reason to play traditional that hasn't been covered. And I think this is as important as anything else. Uh, We're going to hear from Brennan Colbert. Hello, I'm Brennan Colbert. I've been playing drums for about 22 years now and have used the traditional grip pretty much the entire time because it is basically how I was taught because I come from originally a drum core setting. Now I play a lot of metal, rock, progressive rock, progressive metal. My first drum instructor showed me the traditional technique. And it goes something like this. You start off with basically like you're flipping someone off. So you take the stick and then you flip somebody off. Okay. You want to have your fingers basically curl them a bit. Okay. You want to have your fingers like this rounded over here. Okay. This area right here nice and closed off. So you get... A nice fulcrum point for the stick okay you want to be able to have enough power that's the key especially if you're doing rim shots and you're really laying into the head you need to be able to bam right into it as a teenager I got a kick out of flipping everybody off a little bit when I was playing um, it was rock and roll so I enjoyed that so the technique pretty much stuck Over the years, the more music I played, and it was a considerable amount of music, I went to MI and going through that and becoming an indie artist. Playing traditional grip kind of became my go-to grip, and I was comfortable using it. I tried the matched grip a few times. Okay, more than a few times. But I just couldn't become super comfortable with it. Um, or as comfortable with it as I was with traditional grip. So it became, the traditional grip became my go-to grip. And I've used it for many years, all these years of my playing. So that's why I primarily use the traditional grip. So I want to give a huge shout out to Buddy. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for including me. And I hope to see you guys all very soon. All right. Thanks a bunch. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> now look, I'm not even kidding. We are keenly aware that we're flipping people off when we're playing traditional grip. We know it. We're very aware of it. It's, some of us even call it the bird grip. You know, I mean, it, it lends itself to some jokes, right? Um, but the fact is, something that he's saying, it looks cool. Playing traditional grip looks cool. It just does. Now, bear in mind, Brennan's a killer player, and and he's got a lot more that he could have offered, and his video offered a lot of technical information that I was covering with you tonight as well. But one of the things that I really liked about his video was the fact that it just looks cool. He liked the fact that it looked cool. He liked it as a kid that he was flipping people off. I get it. You know, it's one of those things that we, it's an inside joke among drummers. We we, we totally get it. And it's it's tremendously cool when you see another one because let's face it we traditional players we are we're a a brotherhood sisterhood cult (laughs) cult um we definitely 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 um acknowledge each other when we see traditional players you know it's it's a tip of the hat because we know while we're we're increasingly rare on drum kit i think the grip is very viable still uh, because of all the marching. Let's see, we got a lot of things over here, Toby. Uh, yep, you will definitely, you need to get yourself a kit so you can start learning. That's exactly right. Um, that's funny. Uh, Veronica, oh, thank you, Veronica. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I had to do something, right? It was pretty cool. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that, Tom. I appreciate the, 
I appreciate that. And thank you uh, for Veronica again. I appreciate that a ton. Um, Tom, what are you saying over here, man? Uh, yeah, we do tend to learn fast like that, don't we? Sometimes that's just what you got to do, man. Uh, wow. Uh, Reggie. Okay, so look, Reggie, I'm, I, I applaud the fact that you're trying to learn it. I would suggest that you get a teacher. I Believe it or not, if you'll message me later, the very guy that taught me traditional grip all those years ago lives in Indianapolis now. So I can connect you with the actual person that taught me all those years ago, if you would like. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those deals. So uh, feel free to hit me up. You know how to get in touch with me. Uh, and, and in fact, any of you, if you ever have questions about the show, many of you do message me post show. Uh, feel free. I'm always around. Uh, I, I don't always answer them right away, but I will answer you within 24 hours, I'm sure. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for that. Uh, Brennan, you're very welcome, brother man. Thank you for your video. I appreciate it tremendously. I loved the fact that you acknowledged the cool factor of it because it is absolutely true. Uh, Michael, what are you saying? Fun switching back and forth? You know, I get that. I, I I tried to become a match grip guy, but the fact is um, traditional grip for me is something of a calling card. It, it, I, I believe in it pretty deeply. Um, and, and I also, uh, I'm just better at it. It's one of the few things in the world that I just go, you know what, I'm really good at that thing. Uh, so I tend to stick with it because of that, you know. But match grip has proven to be an interesting study. I, I'm nobody's Latin Player. I'm not a great Latin player, but I definitely find myself being a better Latin player match grip than traditional grip. So it has its places, even even for me. Um, you know, like I said, I, I tend to play halftime shuffles a little better when I'm playing the match grip. I, doesn't make any sense to me, but you know, who am I to argue? It just is what it is. I thank you so much for for your time and your attention and for everything that you're doing. Uh, thank you, everybody that that says uh, that comments and whatnot. Um, thanks. Oh, thank you, Donnie. Appreciate that, man. Well, you were one of them, my friend. Thank you so much for that. Um, Dave Deneering. Hey, Dave. I didn't even know you were here. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, Dave. You do use both. I know that absolutely. Tom Kuhn, what are you saying, brother man? Hybrid playing does have its advantages. I agree. I like to say I'm 95% traditional, that kind of deal. So, so we'll go with that. Um, Reggie, well, what's he saying? Oh well, okay. Well, you know, in June, hit me up and we'll we'll get you connected with my guy. Or you, if you want, you can hit me up and we'll I'll teach you myself. Um, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. I'm really working on this thing. I want it to be a good show for everybody concerned. Myself. Uh, you guys don't know Eli Jarrah is the producer of the show, and uh, he and I work diligently to get this done uh, for you guys. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to to shout him out. He's a he's a great great guy and a great friend uh, of mine as well. And I thank you for thank him for everything. Next week, next week, you're gonna want to be here for this one. Uh, next week we'll have Quentin Robinson on. Uh, Q is. A, very dear friend of mine and an absolute monster drummer. Uh, he's he his credits are are deep, you know, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we're going to have him on and have a great, great conversation. He lives in the eastern time zone. He lives in Atlanta, so it's going to be really late for him, but he's staying up for for us. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation and talk about all sorts of things with him, like uh, how he ended up playing on Broadway and how he ended up uh, touring with Peebo Bryson and, um, and many, many other artists. Uh, it's going to be a great, great, great show. Thank you to everyone who submitted videos, everybody, who, even the people that I couldn't get to. Uh, I really appreciate your interest in this subject. We are a passionate bunch, and I love that. Thanks to everybody around the world. I, I've seen Australia and um, the Netherlands have chimed in tonight. Uh, Canada has chimed in. I've seen quite a few. So thanks to everybody that's, that's sticking around with me. And I will see you next week.